Adult Swim's sincere, wholesome, anime-inspired take on The Man of Steel continues in the pages of My Adventures with Superman, issue number one. A new comic book series that's been brought to us courtesy of Josie Campbell, the showrunner for the actual series itself, taking place between the events of season one and two. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we dig on into the comics, something rather interesting happens, and that is we actually get to hear Earth-12 Clark's internal monologue. I say this is interesting because the use of internal monologue is quintessential comic book writing, but the show never actually does it, so getting to hear what our Superman is thinking is kinda cool. Also, showing that Campbell herself is a real student of the game and is able to change up her writing style to match whatever medium she's in, which I also like. Now, season one of My Adventures with Superman ended around Thanksgiving, and now as we join this new story, it's Christmas time. Clark, in his internal monologue, is talking about the transformative power of snow. And how no matter how old you are, for some reason, whenever you see fresh fall in snow, you just want to make a ball and throw it at someone. In a way, Clark hopes that his work as Superman will also have a similarly positive transformative effect, and we can see him actually helping out the city's construction teams try and rebuild, following Dr. Ivo's destructive rampage in his kaiju-sized parasite suit. You might also remember, too, that it wasn't just Metropolis that got banged up by the end of season one of My Adventures with Superman. The Kent family farm also took a beating. Meaning that while Ma and Ma can't rebuild, this is going to actually be Clark's very first time spending Christmas alone in the big city. Clark spills his guts to Ronnie, Lombard, and Cap, but it's made abundantly clear that they're not listening. Hell, Lombard doesn't even really seem to know Clark's name. In reality, though, the news team was more or less told to keep Clark busy while his two best friends, Lois and Jimmy, are hard at work on their next big assignment. No, it's not something for the paper. It's trying to create the perfect holiday itinerary for Clark so he doesn't feel home sick. They've gotten him dinner reservations at a fancy hotel, a museum trip, and even tickets to see the Metropolis Monarchs, as well as several other backup tickets, because let's face it, he's probably gonna have to leave at some point to be Superman, yeah? Jimmy is, of course, able to make all of this happen, because very soon he's about to become a millionaire. He sold his wildly successful Flamebird app to the paper, and the money is about to clear any day now, meaning it's going to be a very, very happy holiday for him and his friends. Of course, though, this is Metropolis, and trouble always seems to be right around the corner. It's at that very moment the Daily Planet ends up getting rocked by strange seismic events. It's not a regular earthquake, though, as they're actually the only building that ended up getting affected, and when Clark suits up as Superman and checks outside, he can see actual handprints on the building's foundation, meaning that someone or something was actively trying to tip the building over. Naturally, this looks like a job for the news trio, and as such, they take to the sewers to try and find any leads they can. Lois and Jimmy actually getting into something of a friendly competition about who's gonna break the story first. Clark is actually a little reticent about taking his friends on this dangerous mission because, again, at the finale of the first season, Lois had to actually step on in and save him when he was affected by kryptonite. So, you know, this whole superhero business is only getting more and more dangerous, and Clark fears a scenario wherein he might not actually be able to save the day. With the help of his superhearing, Superman actually manages to weed out the perpetrator behind the strange seismic occurrences, and wouldn't you know it, the bad guy du jour for this issue is actually the parasite. But wait, you're probably saying that's impossible. Superman defeated Ivo at the end of season one, and indeed he did, but it seems that his suit is now actively running around without him. In fact, this story revelation is actually kind of perfect too, because if you watched the first episode of season two of My Adventures with Superman, Ivo actually has the suit back on again, and a lot of people thought that that was some miscontinuity. But I, as a longtime comic reader, figured that with this new series coming out so close to the debut of season two, it was only a matter of time before this story actually explained that, and that looks like where they're going. The suit grabs Superman, and in doing so, manages to siphon away some of his amazing strength. It's all Clark can do to try and protect people from falling debris created during their clash. Also, while no one seems to be inside the suit right now, it's still actively trying to communicate with Superman, at first saying nothing but gibberish, but after absorbing more power, eventually managing to get out the words, save me. This obviously complicates matters like never before, and just to really end up throwing another wrench into the works here, it's at that very moment the military ends up showing up to try and reclaim the suit. Meaning that Superman has to go out of his way to defend the parasite from the military, and also defend the military from the parasite. Leading these army men in trying to reclaim military surplus is revealed to be none other than Special Agent Dubois, who long 
time comic book fans will already be able to point out, is the civilian alter ego of supervillain Bloodsport, a villain quite famous for shooting Superman with a kryptonite bullet. Bloodsport just doesn't work for any old arm of the government either, he apparently works for Checkmate, which also got their first name drop in the first couple episodes of Season 2 of My Adventures with Superman. In fact, as we pull back, we can see Agent Slade Wilson actually has Dubois in his crosshairs at the behest of his boss, Amanda Waller, who has been fighting a whole shadow war against several other super science and espionage organizations like Cadmus. Dubois and the military end up boxing up the parasite and taking him away, but Clark wonders to himself if he made the right choice in letting this happen, and that if maybe, he should honor the parasite suit's request and save him, even if doing so means once again going up against a secret black ops organization. And so that was my adventures with Superman issue number one, everybody, and if you couldn't tell, I thought this issue was really damn good, a super organic continuation of the first season of my adventures with Superman that honors all the stuff I love about the show. It's sweet, sincere, it's wholesome, it has its own unique sense of humor. It fearlessly remixes and remasters beloved comic book characters and concepts in fresh and interesting ways that I was not expecting. The art in the book is definitely reminiscent of the show, again showcasing some of the cool new designs they have for characters while not being slavishly devoted to the art style from the show. More than anything though, what I think I really like about this series is that it actually feels important so far, like you are getting a bigger picture of the My Adventures with Superman Earth-12 universe by reading this comic, where other times where I've read tie-ins to animated superhero shows and it didn't exactly feel that way, it sure helps that the showrunner is also writing the comic. Well, more people definitely know Campbell now for her work on television, she's previously also worked on stuff like Wonder Woman and Shazam, so this isn't her first at bat doing a comic, and let me tell you, she can write a mean-ass comic. Overall, I would give this one a very positive 8.5 out of 10. If you're a fan of my adventures with Superman, most definitely check this out because it's just more to love. And also be sure to watch my in-depth reviews breaking down every new episode of my adventures with Superman most Sundays. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way everyone, I will see you again next time, Bye bye